Hey there everyone, Natesh here, back again with another video and welcome to the TypeScript series. So in case you are new along from learning from me or in case you have watched other videos, then you probably know this. So whenever I start a series, I go slow in the very beginning. It might feel like it's too slow. But eventually I pick up the pace with the tutorial so that it's easier for everyone to follow. And we are exploring TypeScript. And one more big thing, in all of my videos, I encourage a lot of people to learn from documentation. Surely you can just keep on watching my videos, but the ultimate knowledge that I can give you is how to read the documentation. So throughout the series, I'll walk you through that how you can read the documentation, can better at the things so that you can learn things on your own. And we'll be also coding along with that. So this is going to be our very first official kind of Hello World, and we're gonna see what impact TypeScript can add when we write a simple Hello World program. Nothing fancy, just getting started, very basics, very slowly. So let me talk you through and let me bring you up on my screen first. So uh, let's first understand about the types. So as I've already mentioned, TypeScript is all about types and we're gonna study a whole lot of types. So the obvious question is, what are kind of types that are available in the TypeScript? And trust me, there are many, many of the types are available. For example, you'll be seeing me talking about numbers and strings and Boolean, but these are not the only types. Yes, they can be divided into primitive type or the other types or modern types. I honestly say that don't do this kind of division between the categories and types. They are all just types and try to picture them through just one screen that all of them are just types. And just to name others, there are null, undefined, and there is a special type known as void. And there's also objects and arrays and tuples and couple of more types as well, which are available in the TypeScript language. And once you understand and master what are the types which are available and how to utilize them, that's all the TypeScript. That is all the TypeScript is all about. But what I have noticed in a lot of code bases that people use TypeScript, but a lot of time this keyword I have found floating around like here and there. If you're using any as a keyword, that means you are intentionally making your code more vulnerable or more like a JavaScript-ish so that you don't have to worry about the types. If, ha if there are situations where you're using any, that means you are not probably not many, not much sure that you should be either using it or not. And to surprise a lot of you, there is even a type known as never and unknown. <laughs> yes, these are special type given to us by the TypeScript. And I would like to walk you through with this documentation so this is a documentation which talks about the unknown and the any and the object and void and undefined. There's a lot of them. And if you look at this table summary, this is an abstract row, what is allowed, what is not allowed and strict checking all of that. Now we'll come back onto this table and chart. We'll understand the meaning of it that how any impacts uh, the code that you're writing or how unknown and object and void define all of this impact. This is your very first look of how to jump into the documentation. So instead of that, let me just click on the get started. And this is what it's saying TS for new program. Or in fact, if you go at the very top of it, you'll find the docs tab. The docs of the TypeScript and even all of the language are designed by different people. So they are very different for all of the other, but they follow some of the specification that this is what the guidelines I'll follow in the documentation. So this is the guideline that we'll be following through in this entire tutorial. And you can see there's a lot of cheat sheets and all these things like decorators, enums are available. We'll be going through with all of them. The first I want to bring your attention is just simply the basics, not the handbook, but the basics. So once you click on the basics, you can notice that there are things available. So if I click on everyday types, you can see there is a primitive type. And a lot of tutorial goes through with that, which is good, that there are strings and numbers and Boolean. But not only that, if you look a little bit uh, lower down, there is array, there is any, which is notoriously known for not being used. And uh, there is no implicit any, uh, then we have a whole lot of functions and all of them. So JavaScript and TypeScript are closely related. We'll come back onto this one. All I want you for this tutorial is just go through this. Don't read the example, just go through how many types actually can you figure out and find out. So on this page, how many types or how many keywords uh, you can find out, just list them in the comment section. That would be really helpful for other people who are coming in. So for example, we have object, we have union and a whole lot of thing. Eventually we'll be covering them up. Don't you worry on that part. Now, once you've gone through with the type, we will be writing some code in this tutorial. One thing more, I would like to put a picture in your mind while learning the TypeScript. The first one is situation. So at what situation the TypeScript serves best? Although you can design your variable or declare your variable any given time, but imagine to think that TypeScript is helping you out in figuring out what data is about to be processed or what data is about to be coming from any resource or what data your function is going to send out. So just two example I have taken as a use case scenario here. 
a function accepts two number. Now what happens in the regular JavaScript code is once a function accepts the number, then you check the type of these uh, values. And you want to be make sure that these are actually number because I want to perform some operations on that. What TypeScript helps you out is you don't have to explicitly check that, hey, if the function which is accepting and what is coming as a data, is it really number? Is it, it might be a string or it might be a void or nothing might be coming in. So TypeScript allows you to get away from the situation. So extra line of code that you don't have to write. The similar situation is a function returns a string. So obviously the situation that comes in the JavaScript, that suppose you're using a function and you're expecting that the data coming out of that function is a string, but that not might be the case. Maybe some other programmer has written this and he might have thrown out a number and that could be a problematic situation. So when you're working with the team and you're using TypeScript, you are absolutely sure that from this function, I always expect that a string is going to come out. And that's where when you're working with the team, the TypeScript actually makes a life a lot more easier. Yes, there are a lot of rules and protocols that we have to follow, but this helps us to actually not fall into a lot of such problems. So we're going to first walk through with the very basic syntax in this video. We'll be getting through, read through a couple of errors that we already are having. And then we're going to slowly pick up the pace about reading the documentation and learning more about TypeScript. So the syntax is pretty simple. We use let const whatever the keyword you want to use for declaring your variable. Then you simply go ahead and use a variable name. After the variable name, you put a colon and define its type. Now all the types, almost all the types in TypeScript are lowercase. There is no uppercase, there is no camel casing, all lowercase. So numbers, strings, whatever you want to name or put a data type on it, then all, all it's a lowercase. Then optionally, you can pass on a value or can just declare a variable. Let's go ahead and give it a try by writing some of the code because I still believe that writing the code makes much, much more easier things. And also we can see there are some squiggly line already in my code, which is not looking good. So we need to learn how we can actually get rid of this error temporarily. And then later on, once we're going to learn about the TypeScript config, it will help us to understand it more. So again, have patience. Okay. So let's go ahead and close this out because I'm not interested in this one. So intro.ts, nope, not interested. Let's go ahead and create another file. And let's just call this as uh, variables uh, me.ts. And again, this me is just a fancy word, so don't you worry on that. So let's go ahead and declare a simple variable name that just says hello world. So let's just go ahead and say, hey, I want to have a let. And let's call this one as greetings. And in the greetings, we're going to put up a colon and then we're going to write a simple string. And then once I go ahead and do this, I'll optionally pass on a value. Now this alone is a good statement. There is nothing wrong in it. You have created a variable and you have defined that only string type of value can come into it. But optionally, we can also go ahead and put up some value in it. So go ahead and write your name. So I'm going to write mine. You go ahead and write yours. Once I go ahead and do this, I want to do a simple console log. I can go ahead and simply say, hey, I want to have a greeting, just like that, greetings. Save this, and this works absolutely fine in this case. Now, let me walk you through that this is all good, and we can just go ahead and use a TSC syntax for this. So, uh, TSC, and this one is uh, variables.tsme. It is obviously going to generate a TSJS code. This is all good. And notice here, it doesn't change anything. Also, it gives us a squiggly line which says, cannot redeclare block scope variable greetings. What this all is about. We will have a dedicated video on it. Right now, to just get rid of this error, we're going to go ahead and say exports, then a colon, and that's it. This is going to remove the error temporarily and will give us a peace of mind that, hey, don't worry about these squiggly lines. But I promise you, we'll come back onto this one later on. Right now, this is all good. Now, this alone statement of putting a colon is really, really fundamental to this one. You click on greeting and notice it says that the greetings is a string. This is a peace of mind that yes, I'm declaring a variable which always, no matter what happens, is always going to accept the string. Later on, some other programmer who is working on the same project gets this variable and try to assign it a number as six. This automatically stops me and saves me an error that, hey, uh, the type number cannot, is not assignable to type string because it's a number. You cannot do this. If anybody tries to declare, let's just say, a true value into it, it says, hey, that's also not allowed. You should not be doing it. That is what the safety that TypeScript actually gives you. Not only that, if I go ahead and remove this, and if I try to put up a dot, you can see all the methods that are being suggested to me, like pad ends and all of that, these are string methods. These are not methods which are meant for number. 
For example, let's just go ahead and declare another variable up here, which actually gets a number. So let's just call this one as my num. And that number is four or six, whatever that is. And I go back up here and I say, hey, I want to use my num dot and I want to use two upper case. You cannot do it. Accidentally, this might happen, not from you maybe, but from person who is using your code base and is collaborating with you on the code. It says that, hey, a property to uppercase does not exist on type number. Not only that, it also allows you to have more safety. For example, there is a greeting and I know that two uppercase or two lowercase exist in this one and I can go ahead and run this one. But accidentally, maybe I'm not using suggestion. Maybe I'm using Vim or other code editor and I might have done this lowercase. And I can tell you, I have done this. I have done this a lot of typos in the past. But TypeScript actually allows me to give a suggestion that, hey, property to lowercase does not exist. Uh, did you mean to lowercase? So it also helps me to get my indefined method. And as you train it more, it actually gets uh, suggestions from your own code base as well. So that is really, really impressive and amazing. So, so far we have gone through with the very basic. We'll take it slow and steadily. So right now, all you have to learn is colon and a string. That's how you should be declaring the variable. Now, eventually in the later on videos, you'll realize that sometimes we don't even need to dis use this colon. It automatically infers the value and stops you doing mischiefs like adding uh, later on number to the greetings. We will walk through in that. But right now, this is all. You have gone through with your very first idea of how uh, TypeScript works, a little bit intro to the documentation, some assignment that you have to do in the comment section. And I'll catch you up in the next video where we'll explore a little bit more in depth of TypeScript. Let's catch up in the next one. And one more important thing, very, very important thing. You guys forgot to hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and do that. I would be really thankful for that. Let's catch up in the next one.